Now, before we move on from this topic, I'd like to go over a potential error that you might have if you're on a Vistas machine. And so we're on the AdventureWorks download section, and I've downloaded it, and I'm going to try to install it. So we can click it, and we're going to unpack it as we did before. But you're going to find that our downloads are not going to show up, and let me explain why. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to pause the video while this is unpacking. So everything has unpacked, so let's go ahead and accept the terms. And let's hit Next. Now this is a problem that is peculiar to Vista. We did not have this problem with XP. And so here we are for the installation, and you'll notice that none of the uh, install packages are showing up, as they did before in the XP case. So if you hit the Install button, basically nothing's going to install. So how do you fix that? Well, it turns out in some of the older Vista systems, like mine, for example, the remoting tag wasn't set. So go ahead and click on the Start, and go over to um, Computer, and right-click on that, and go to Properties. And in the Properties tab, just go ahead and go to Remote Settings. And in the Remote uh, tab, go ahead and click on Allow Remote Assistance Connection to this computer. And then you'll be able to install the AdventureWorks. Hit OK. And now let's try it. So let's click again and unpack and see if our install applications show up. Go ahead and accept and hit Next. And you see, once again, our install packages did not show up. Now, I'm not surprised why because you need to restart your machine for the uh, remote setting to take effect. So let's restart the machine, go get a cup of coffee and come back and we'll do it again. Okay, we've restarted our machine and we're back, so let's go ahead and try to install AdventureWorks again. Hit run, and once again we're going to unpack, we'll pause and let that occur. So once again you get the agreement, so let's accept that. and hit next and if you notice once again I don't see the databases that I need to install so what's the problem we have to realize we just restarted our machine and from restarting our machine we just turned our server off so we need to go and turn our server back on in order to do the install so let's go ahead and cancel this let's go down here to the start menu and let's click on uh, SQL Server Configuration Manager our best friend here and if you notice, you can see that our um, MSSQL engine is turned off, so we're going to turn that on. So right-click on it and hit Start. And it's going to start the service up, and at that point, we should be able to do the install. And sometimes people have to actually turn off their firewalls as well. So if you go down to your system tray, your firewall might be turned on or enabled, and you need to turn that off as well for some installs. So let's go ahead and try the install again. We'll minimize this. We don't need this anymore. Let's hit AdventureWorks, and let's run it. And we'll pause this while it unpacks. Let's go ahead and accept the agreement. Hit Next. And there we go. There are the files that we need to install. They're finally showing up. Now, I've seen a lot of creative solutions on the web on how to fix this uh, this issue. But you see, from my point of view, it was extremely simple. So what I want to encourage you to do is, as you occur or run into problems when installing SQL Server or add-on software, do the easy stuff first. I've seen some stuff like, I've seen stuff like go clean your registry out and do this and that. Be very careful when you start working with your registry and be careful about taking some of the advice that you see on the website. It might not be right. So you want to consult basically Microsoft site and some of the online books that will show you how to install next time. But just make sure that you do the easiest step first and do it one step at a time. Don't do a bunch of things and try to run it because then you don't know which one is right or wrong. Just go one step at a time, be patient, and look for the right solutions. And typically the simple solutions are the best. More complicated ones actually can get you into trouble. So that's how you fix your Vista problem, at least this one. But remember, if your machine specs differ from mine, even slightly, expect a different install process or to run into different errors. Well, thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.